Hi, everyone. Welcome to my show where I get to interview really great, amazing, talented people who have accomplished great work. And um, most of the time, it just so happens that I know these people. <laughs> so lucky me. Uh, today, we have, for instance, um, my wonderful friend, Ida, and her husband, John. Welcome. Hi. I'm so happy that Hi. you guys are here. Um, Ida is actually... Um, Ida is my childhood friend, um, but it just so happens that also her husband is the author of 12 books. <sighs> we, we have to be on a race now. Um, I have 12 books now, so I now know. we got to <laughs> see who's going to do the next one. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um, first, I'm just going to really quickly go through some announcements. Uh, before I start the interview with these awesome people. Um, so March 22nd, I will be at the Center of Enlightenment at 7 p.m. Um, it's the Arise Spiritual Retreat and Wellness Group. Um, on March 3rd, there's a three-part workshop series called Transforming Your Life Story at the Royal Oak Library. It's a uh, Wednesdays, March 14, 21, and 28 from 7 to 8.30. Uh, October 5th to 7th, uh, there's a spiritual and writing summit at the Kellen Bear Retreat and Conference Center in Clarkston, Michigan. And you can find out, find out more about that at thepathofconsciousness.com. And November 10th, 2018, there's a Detroit Work and Writers Conference at the MSU Management Education Center in Troy. Um, the vice president of DWW, and we have great writers that give great presentations there. And actually, um, Mr. John is going to be one of the people that is going to be doing a workshop. Um, when I talked to him last time, and I'm I've known him for a couple of years. He's been very supportive of my work, uh, and his work is great, too. And I just keep seeing him come out with these very interesting books. Um, so we were talking, and we thought that he's going to tell you why we picked uh, the topic that we picked, because his books, you will see, are really amazing, and they're adventurous. But, you know, I the thing about them is I'm not someone who reads action books, but there's a real story there, and mm -hmm. there's a, very, a, a literary voice. Um, and I think part of it is has to do with your past, uh, your experience you know, in the Navy. I'd love for you to share that with our audience. Okay. Um, my experience in the Navy, um, well, I went to the U.S. Naval Academy for education, which means I came out as an officer, and I ended up um, getting assigned to a uh, Trident missile submarine back in, oh my God, it's been a long time, <laughs> early 90s. Um, and that was, you know, that is an adventure. It's also a, uh, it's also a tough adventure. I, I have a great respect for all our men and women who are serving now in any armed forces because it's, it's, it's a hard life. That's why most of them are young and they can handle the, the difficulties. And um, so I, I, um, I found it a very challenging lifestyle. You know, there's no sun, there's no, uh, there's no fresh air, there's no uh, fresh food. It's um, and we're working all the time. That sleep is hard to come by, um, and that's why I didn't stick around. And it's by design. A lot of people don't stick around in, in the Navy because it's you know they, they know a lot of people are going to you know, take the experience and go. And I'm one of the many who did. Um, but I was going through some personal issues at the time, too. I had some orthopedic problems and uh, un just un unresolved emotional problems. And uh, I thought about writing at the time when I was in the Navy. I said, I want to I wanna, I wanna address this through some writing. And it just so happened that uh, I was standing watch. I was supervising the reactor plant, and we all, we all have reactor plants, so that's a common thing, and it becomes a good time to share some stories in a... A man who was very, uh, very thoughtful turned around, a very well-read man actually, and said, you know what, I have an idea to take over this submarine and steal it. I said, do tell. <laughs> <laughs> he told me his plan, starting from the beginning, front of the ship, steal the guns, break the key off in the locker so no one else can get the other guns, walk forward, wait for so-and-so to come by, break his kneecaps, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, you know. That's got a pretty high, high chance percentage of working. So I use that as the basis for the plot in my first novel, which was, you know, like I said, I was writing for therapy. I was writing to express myself. And then I had this pretty cool plot and uh, that came together and ended up being my first book. 
And then um, after that, well, first of all, when did when did your first book come out? Um, 2005, I want to say. 2005. Okay. I wrote it for, it took me nine years to write it, so it, it oh, came out. Oh, really? And, I didn't um, know that. Very the slow first book. Learner. So, you know what? This is, but no, but here's the point. I mean, here it took all these years, and then once it came out, and that's what a lot of people don't realize is sometimes when you have a book stuck inside of you, once you release that book, once you publish, oh, yeah. things just kind of come out and flow more naturally. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show the covers, I mean, just to prove. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so look at his awesome covers over there. These are the series. Uh, you're at number what right now? I have number 10 in the market, and number 11 is queued up. My, uh, my editor is going through his final edits, and I expect it to be in the market in March. Okay. Let me bring up, so this is number 11? 11. Yep. Okay, cool. I keep them alphabetical just to make it easy so Easier people know to, where, right. where to look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in just a little over 10 years, uh, you're, you've written 12 books. I mean, that's mm -hmm. really, it's amazing. But uh, from what you told me, though, you have a book right now that's a little bit different. Oh, yeah. So you've mm -hmm. ventured in a different. Oh, and that's why let's discuss that. We thought that the a nice thing for you to do with regards to your workshop and given your years of experience is um, to do a workshop on adventurous fiction. Mm -hmm. It's because of all these uh, novels. So let me put up the cover for the new book. Uh, let's now, that's totally different. It's a bit of a change, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yes. yes. Well, I have to admit, uh, I love color. <laughs> so me too. I love this color. Uh, yeah. you know. And actually, this is something that I can see that Ida probably had a good hand in. Ida? Would I you don't know. I mean, no? he... Oops. He Wrong came place. up with the story, and I added a little bit of help here and there. Mm -hmm. Not too much, but it was all him. Well, this you, you'd helped in more ways than you know, actually. Uh, okay. uh, for example, we'll, we'll start with the first point that you're making, is you actually did help define one of the characters. I was looking for a weakness in a character, because you don't want supermen, superwomen, otherwise there's, yeah. there's no kryptonite, and mm -hmm. we know the and answer. And it's not real. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she came up with the idea for an autistic uh, young brother for the main character so that she has a, a family tie that's keeping her, keeping her responsibilities focused and kind of limiting her, and it's helping shape who she is. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was a very good plot mechanism. But what you, you, know, you helped me with my entire personal spiritual journey, and that's, this book is it's kind of a, it's stepping back from the adventure fiction that we Am and I were talking about which I obviously, uh, when you're talking submarine warfare, you're talking adventures. But um, I wanted to try something that was um, more personal, actually, in, in a different way. More well, spiritual is the right word, it, and that's why this, we're dealing with supernatural elements in this book. You know, we all, if we all sit down and think hard enough, we could um, intuit that our five senses are not a complete understanding or give us a complete understanding of reality throw in our minds and what we can think about what we sense with our five senses and most of us would agree that there's there's a ton of stuff out there that's beyond our understanding so I like to think in terms of well what's out there and we, we all probably ask ourselves that question and that that kind of gets explored in this book um, and you've helped me with my journey on you know where who am I in this world and what are my spiritual beliefs? And a lot of those obviously reflect in this because there's no way you can hide yourself from a from a book of that sort of work. Well, you know what? This is the first time that um, we talked about this book and you writing uh, in this genre. And so this is the first time I'm hearing this. And it seems uh, I like the fact that you have obviously developed as, as an author. But some people and, you know, there's nothing wrong with staying in the same genre, but uh, we change as people. I mean, I started off writing fiction and slowly went into nonfiction, and then I felt like it, because of some of the experiences that you're talking about, mm -hmm. I started writing non, uh, memoir. Mm -hmm. And that, the challenging part with that, we were talking about yeah. this early, earlier because yeah. I mentioned Ida <laughs> and oh something. But I so revealed myself. It was, ve it was very terrifying for me to reveal myself the way I did in mm -hmm. the memoir. But it was that next journey that I knew as an author I had to go there mm -hmm. because I'd been writing for so many years. And it, um, so this seems like the, it was like kind of transformational and for yeah. you mm -hmm. to go and um, and as the main character is she, she she's a female mm -hmm. 
Yes. Uh, I'm going to be um, interviewing later on Ida's daughter, who is, you, I'd like you to talk about that, uh, how she influenced this book. Sure. Um, one of the challenges in writing fiction is developing who your characters are. And it's, it, it can be lost sometimes. Sometimes you get so focused on the plot and the adventure that you forget that the character should be driving the story and, and an author should know the character intimately, all, char all the main characters intimately. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be a challenge. And as I was coming up with this character for this, for this, um, for this book, it dawned on me that she was, she was living under my roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I can say her name, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, because I'm going to, yeah. Um, yeah. So Christina uh, Salem, she's going to be um, our guest yeah. um, for, in, in a couple of weeks. And this, she, you were inspired by yeah. her character somewhat, or is that well, what you were I telling see a me? Lot of and she's interesting in herself. I mean, that's okay. why that. Uh, we were thinking uh, initially to bring her on the show with you mm -hmm. guys, but then when I learned uh, of her own talents, I said, uh, no, you know, she deserves her own <laughs> half-hour segment. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yes. Well, she's, I was talking about uh, spiritual exploration. She is doing that, and she's um, she's confident in it. You know, a lot of people will do it, and they'll, they'll hide it, and they won't share what they're learning. Well, Christina is... I know what she's doing because she's told me about it. She tells her mother about it. She, she's exploring what's out there in the intuitive realm or the supernatural realm. And you know, she's doing some things that I actually did. I, I examined what, uh, what could happen in the tarot cards. I mean, I, who, who, wouldn't, uh, who wasn't interested in knowing if some cards can actually give you guidance and tell you what's in the future? Mm -hmm. And I was that way when I was her age. I actually had my own deck. So I, I, I see her making a lot of the same moves that I used to make. Now I'm twice her age. I'm a generation ahead of her, and I, I'd like to think I have some some wisdom, where um, my message is different than hers. So it's not like I just got in there and said this is this is the message of Christina. No, it's like Christina has her message. She is a character, but that's one of three main characters in this book. And, and but she is she definitely filled one of the three main character roles, and she is the main character. The other one's the bad guy, and another one's a, a fellow protagonist that's helping her. Um, but she, she fit that perfectly as part of this story. But the story is mine. I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't, right. didn't set out the right but, story about, of her. You know, I, I'm kind of curious because some of the things that you're saying, um, I'm wondering, Ida, as her mom, you know, what is your view on this? Or how do you, regarding the confidence that she has about oh, it? Oh, so, she oozes confidence. I mean, she just walks into a room and she has that presence about her. And the thing is, in the ladies, the girls in my family, we all have that sixth sense, mm -hmm. that thing inside of us that we feel like we know what it is or what's going to happen. And it just runs in the family. And she has it, too. And she's helped a lot of people with it. And she's helped a lot of friends some. Well, and, uh, and that's why I was interested for you to kind of describe her, because I know that from what he's describing, that's uh, those are traits that you have. Um, oh, well, yeah, no, and you do. Uh, I know that something that inspires me about how you live your life is yet you have pursued your dreams, you have lived the life that you wanted to live, and you do quite a bit of volunteer work. Uh, so that's really amazing. And now you're saying with regards to her, at her such her young age, her wanting to help and to serve, normally you get to a much older stage in your life to even mm -hmm. want to do something like that. So I know that she gets that from you, um, you know, so that's why I wanted you to talk about well, it. Well, she definitely makes both, all of us, you know, uh, John and I and, you know, her brothers and all our family and her dad, very, very proud of her. I mean, uh, her out, you know, she's very outspoken. Mm -hmm. And her ability to stand up for those that can't speak for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, she's just very confident in literally everything she does. And it just, it makes me very proud of her. And, you know, it's like, what parent wouldn't smile from ear to ear to Given see that? Child, yes. Yeah. And um, also, you had mentioned in one of your chapters, uh, you brought up something regarding the Chaldeans. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Now, um, so a little bit about Ida sure. and her husband. So she's of Chaldean background. <laughs> 
and John? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Not <European>. so lucky. <laughs> Mix. She always brings up the fact that I'm one quarter Syrian. I am. Oh, you did mention that. Okay. Did, yeah. How did you figure that one out? Or is it's true? It is. It is oh. true. <laughs> it is <laughs> true. <laughs> My uh, grandfather is Syrian. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And the rest of it's European mix, Irish, English mainly. Um, but the the I like what I like about um, the uh, we, we look at the Chaldean culture and that takes us back to Babylon, takes us back to Mesopotamia, takes us back to Nineveh, takes us basically to Mosul and and. Wow, I, I was just reading your book, and you you put some of the history in there, like the wheel was invented there, writing was invented there. Yes, there's a lot of mysticism that's open there, a lot of possible ways of interpreting things that could be magic, things called witchcraft. Uh, Astrology. You, what you, uh, yeah, what you care to believe about it is up to you. But the op the open doors in fiction, mm -hmm. and the journey of exploring it, mm -hmm. what could be there is really cool, mm -hmm. and that's what I baked in there. And it wasn't just it was one chapter that was dedicated. To, uh, that, that you were reading that's up front to help set the tone, but then it keeps coming back in as themes, is there's a lineage here, and the lineage of the, the main character is what's, in, what's very important in this, is because it's like we go back a thousand years, and the conflict in the book has actually existed in a, a lineage of well, the character based on Christina, her name is Diane, which is Greek for huntress, that's why I put it in there. That goes back a thousand years, but the, there's a person that's trying to chase her down and use her as a sacrifice and and if he kills her per a ritual um he gets 50 years of life he basically steals 50 years of life from her so that, that's the main conflict and that's another line that dates back to not quite chaldeans area not not nineveh but um an area in syria i kind of picked myself to, to pick on here and because that also is an area a cradle of a lot of the old ancient learnings mm -hmm. and when you compare those two lines i just picked from them and said, well, pick some goods from here, pick some bads from here, pit them against each other. Well, and you know, um, when you do that, you're introducing people to something that they might not be familiar with. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I discovered, a, a lot of uh, the history that I discovered about the Chaldeans, the Neo-Babylonians, I discovered it here in the United States. Mm. Yeah. And I discovered it from reading. I didn't even discover it from our own community. Uh, I, I knew that, you know, oh, we have a rich history, but no, we don't really have, uh, we don't pay so much attention on the history of that. We pay attention to the faith, which I think we mm -hmm. are very faithful, strong people in that aspect. But there is something about learning the history because, you know, when I was discovering it, um, and, and see, you saw that in my book, it was opening me up to and understanding it regarding self-worth issues even. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the Middle East, part of its problem is they don't even tap into their rich history. Mm -hmm. You know, they're stuck in this, uh, in the battlefield and not looking that if you if they go beyond a, a couple of thousand years, even beyond that and see what existed. Uh, but they're kind of like the last couple of thousand years, it just keeps turning around and around. And, um, and I like that here in this, country you really find a treasure of information you could can be mm -hmm. you know you're you're not even chaldean but mm -hmm. here you are exploring that world mm -hmm. from uh, of ancient um mesopotamia yeah. uh of the middle east and you're kind of bringing it forth in your book and the story um I, I like how you did that I'm, i'd be very interested to read that i think this is something that i would really like to read. <laughs> it sounds like it's in my yeah. Yeah. You'll actually pick up uh, a few Chaldean words in the book, too. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? So. And I, I wonder how who helped him with that. <laughs> Somebody here. I tried. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so, uh, like I said, Christina is going to be joining us. Um, so, what about regarding your, your sons? How do you think, do you think that they kind of have, did they pick up as much of that or is that something it seems like the women you know are more closely um in touch with the six mm -hmm. sons with creative creativity um i know like your daughter once she tapped into the astrology the the history of it she and she's she sounds very gifted it seems like when, once yes. she started uh reading tarot cards that people found those gifts in her um do you think that's more of a feminine 
aspect of, of people uh, and, and it's not as easily picked up by men because like he like John said uh, he's twice her age right. and although he had an interest at some point but it wasn't something that you were exploring no. into such depth and here she is have the age and just kind of picking that up so easily um, I think the boys don't have as strong of a sense as Christina does mm -hmm. but I think they still have a little bit of it mm -hmm. because I felt that if they didn't they wouldn't be as strong in business as they are today mm -hmm. because they're extremely business savvy and um, and that's a talent too yes of course definitely yeah. Yeah. I mean my son owns his own call center uh, refinancing mortgage center you know call center mm -hmm. and he, you know knock on wood he's very successful and he does really really well and he works really hard and there are things where he feels that if he has you know confidence in it or he feels like it's gonna work out he goes for it and he wow. takes a chance okay. yes and this is what it's really about it's not just a matter of how the person uses their talents or creativity uh, it's that they understand their calling and they have that it's the inner instinct that's important that you know if they feel something and they go after it with that kind of courage and determination right. and discipline yes um, so what I, you know, well, we do, we do have some time, but I, I want to go back to regards to your writing. Um, first, what future projects? I know, I mean, it seems, <laughs> you know, here you are coming up with the 11th and the 12th, and here I am, I'm talking about future projects. But because there's a little bit of a shift that has happened, obviously, mm -hmm. what do you think? Do you have the next project lined up, or do you have an idea of it? Um, that's one thing I'd like to, to hear more about. And also... Um, you know, what advice you would give writers? Um, oh, there's a lot of writers that are stuck on that first story, and it's just, and I guess it's okay if it's going to take nine or ten years or mm -hmm. however else, because look what happens thereafter. But I would like to ha hear your viewpoint on all this. Sure. And please stop me if I start rambling, because okay. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm getting older, and I have a lot of wisdom on what, what to okay. do and what not to do as a writer, and I could probably go on at nausea. <laughs> Your first question. I'm, I've written uh, about halfway done with the uh, sequel to Prophecy of Ashes, and I'm, I'm calling it Prophecy of Blood. I'm going to okay. have it go uh, alphabetically just to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. um, I like where it's going. And actually, I have to admit, it's, it's, taked, uh, it's taken most of my creative uh, energy, and I have not conceived of the next book in my submarine novels yet. I had some ideas I put on hold, but I haven't thought of them. So because I'm actually more excited about doing something different at the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, if, and if I finish the next one soon, which I, which I think I will, then it, it may be a coin toss if I go back to one series or the other. But I, I do want to keep writing faster. That's one th and this is kind of a good segue into uh, advice for writers, is, uh, especially very independent writers, is um, if, you're, if you're stuck in neutral or stuck in a low gear, just keep writing. Write, 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 write. Um, and if it's horrible, throw it out. If it's good, it's good. You know, try to get into that stream of consciousness where you're, you're, um, you're just putting words on the paper. And if you if you rehearse it enough times, you'll you'll find that you can get more comfortable with putting out uh, words per hour. And uh, that that seems to be one of the the new mottos in the independent writing groups is to just write when you if you're not sure what you're going to write, just give it a shot. Now, well, I, I have a question about that. Uh, I think you once. I think I think I talked to you about this once. I'm, I'm not. Rem I don't remember the answer. But what what's your schedule like? Because I I know that when we talked about this, and I knew that you were coming out. First of all, how long does it take you to write a book? Because uh, I remember when you told me it it takes you. You're a lot faster than how how long it takes me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was trying to figure out your schedule. So if you can share that a little bit, it might help uh, people understand what kind of commitment it requires. Sure. Um, I've got it down to if I have a if I, once I have a good idea of the story I can do it in about two months, and that's really that sounds fast. But the uh, the target amongst uh, independent authors nowadays is one month, which which I think is wow that is really fast. Um, so I'm comfortable with two how, months. How are you? So what does that require of you to do in those two months? What happens? What's I'm, your schedule like? If I'm not uh, at work, if I'm not uh, out Pretty with much my wife. ignoring his wife. <laughs> well, <laughs> there no. lies the secret. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Literally, 
great on his own. <laughs> this is why I had uh, Ida come here today. So I can really dig down. Sorry, John, but we had to have that. <laughs> In my defense, she does work nights. So I, I, I am do. home alone at night. And that, that, that is when I do most of my writing. Okay. But, like, how many hours? I mean, two months. So how many pages is your um, uh, your novel averages? Um. Well, the... The submarine ones are about 220. They're, wow. they're pretty short, so a, actually. Well, actually, no, that's an average size yeah. book. Yeah. And the other, the uh, the Prophecy of Ashes was closer to 300. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, uh, you know, you, you, you the level of your writing, is, it's literary. I mean, it's not like uh, I've read other books that are nice. kind of fast uh, where people ha- have read them, and there seems to be just a, a formula to it. And I, and I did see that yours has you know, the extra quality. Um, And so how many hours do you spend during that, when you sit down, during those two months when you're just Mm -hmm. totally in your zone, how many hours are you dedicating to that? Oh, I would say a good five hours a day. And you work too, right? Well, it it, it comes back to the the good, good, from the writing perspective, it's good fortune that my wife works nights. So I get home and I got from, you know, five o'clock to 10 o'clock to write and I'll squeeze some during lunch. I'll do weekends. Um, yeah, it, it's what I do. It's my. Mm-hmm. It's you're my you're an engineer for uh, that's yeah. your profession. Yeah. yeah. Yes, and so yeah, so you have a full time job, but then mm-hmm. you also, when you're writing your books, you 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 make the time to yeah. write them. Yeah. And I, I used to, I, I do consider myself still playing soccer. It's just I've I've not played in the last two years because I've, I've I had a major shoulder uh, injury and a repair work where. Mm-hmm. I was just recently cleared to start playing again, and I, I will after we come back from vacation. But that that freed up some time for me too. Yeah, yeah and uh, well, this is what one of the guests I had um, a few weeks back, Sylvia Hubbard. She has over forty books, and um, she's been doing this a while too. And that's what she says. She said it's just, and she works full time. She's got three kids. I mean, they're adults now. But when she started this, they were younger, and she just felt like, you know, uh, she loved mm-hmm. what she did, and she just said it's all about how you manage your time. And right. I think that's what I was trying to get to is that you, you can make it happen. Mm-hmm. It's just the way you dedicate your time. So right. you can't say, well, I work or this. or I'm, I mean, you come home, most people are too tired. They'll turn on the TV, especially after dinner. They yeah. take naps or whatever they want to do. Uh, but That's a great um, point. I mean, that's one yeah. thing I did is I... Yeah. At night, that's that. This is what I do. I, I found uh, I found it really um, effective when I was writing at night, and I set up kind of goals to write X words per hour, and it's been or per night, and it's been growing. I find that I eat less too at night. Oh, so it's healthy too. Yeah, yep, it has. Yeah, it's well, true. Yeah, it's, it's not just healthy. It's literally, it's like therapy to him. It's therapy. It's yeah. very relaxing. And it's like him. that for a lot of people, actually. Yeah. Turn off that, Facebook. Yes. Turn off email. Turn off ESPN. Yep. Dot com, and and you turn off the TV. Living your your life and your dream, and that's you know right. that's the most important thing. Yeah. Um. So, uh, what's your website if people want to visit and then ju- get your books? Okay. Um. My website is. Uh, Sub thriller like a submarine thriller dot com, um, and they can find all your books on there, and yes. they can order them from there yes. or Amazon. Okay, well, I really hate for this show to be <laughs> ending because I want to visit with my friend, especially more. Plus, I really enjoyed I, when I talk to authors. That's the thing; you get so inspired, you want to mm-hmm. go home and start doing the same thing that they're doing. Even mm-hmm. though I myself have twelve books, but you know what? You still you'll have these times where you feel like oh, and you're dragging yourself, you know, mm-hmm. with the next book. Um, but yes, it was just such a pleasure having mm-hmm. Ida here, especially. I mean, we are childhood friends, but it's like everybody gets busy, and uh, sometimes we don't get the pleasure of seeing each life other as often. Yes, yeah. life gets in the way it didn't get in the way today so anyway uh <laughs> thank you for coming and go buy john's book okay yay <laughs> thanks, thanks.